Welcome to Bible Believers Fellowship and the ministry of BBFOhio.com as we conclude this study taught by Brother Stephen Miller titled, I Would Not Have You Ignorant, Brethren. This is part two of two. So God does not want us to ignore or to be ignorant of spiritual gifts. So 1 Corinthians 12 goes into detail about spiritual gifts. Um, we, we went over that already recently, so I won't go over it again. Uh, I suggest you, you check out 1 Corinthians 12 and then Romans chapter 12. That'll tell you about some spiritual gifts that God doesn't want you to ignore. So I'm going to ignore those right now for time. So that was, that's number four. Four, okay. So um, number five, uh, go to uh, 2 Corinthians 1.8. So this is the fifth reference. 2 Corinthians 1.8. I went way too far. Second Corinthians 1 8 says, uh, For we would not, brethren, have you ignorant of our trouble which came to us in Asia, that we were passed or were pressed out of measure above strength, insomuch that we despaired even of life. Okay, so you remember what we read in uh, the, what the first thing was that we weren't to ignore? that the ministry is hard and that people are going to come at you and uh, God just wants you to know in a it's a seven part seven point sermon that both points number one and points number five are the same so the ministry is hard and people will come at you so again God warns and he wants us to not be ignorant that the ministry is full of trials and troubles and and uh of its full of trials and troubles of the ministry. And what he's talking about there is what happened in uh, Acts 19. And what happened in Acts 19 was there was this, uh, Paul went and preached and there was this great revival. And then uh, everybody got rid of their idols and that made the idol manufacturers, uh, not the idol manufacturers, but the people who built the idols at a non-idle pace, at a fast pace, it made them, it made, it made them upset. So uh, then they took, they, they took Paul and in, in the most uh, capitalistic manner uh, kicked him out of the city so that he wouldn't interfere with the, uh, with the finances of the, of the government. So when, you know, when Christians come in and they say, hey, uh, you know, we should not, you know, we should not have, you know, the porn industry. And hey, you know, you, sh you should not be buying uh, liquor, you know, wholesale. You know, well that, you know, hey, you shouldn't buy cigarettes, you know, that kind of stuff. You know, that, that affects people that, that, you know, they'll lose their jobs because of that. You know, you have to understand that, you know, people will lose their jobs if a whole bunch of Christians get together and, uh, and say, no, we're not going to support that industry. And uh, here we can, you know, Acts uh, 15 gives us an example of Christians putting their money where their, where their mouth is, basically. Of course, they don't put their mouth there anymore. But uh, they, you know, you put your money where the Bible says to put your money. Um, you don't... Uh, you know, there are a lot of investors that will invest in, you know, stocks and mutual funds or they'll buy products, uh, you know, from, you know, it's like Target's an example or uh, Starbucks or Coca-Cola or Pepsi. You know, you have all these different companies. And uh, what's, what's interesting is that, you know, I just read something about Chick-fil-A. And what was interesting is, you know, everybody here probably has eaten at Chick-fil-A before at least once. And uh, you, you understand that you cannot go from church to then go to Chick-fil-A on Sunday because they're closed on Sunday. They've always been closed on Sunday. And that's, that's cool. Um, and what's interesting is that Chick-fil-A is coming up and it's now in the third rank of the, uh, on the fast food chain. So obviously everybody knows that uh, you know, McDonald's is number one because they're a worldwide conglomerate. And then uh, I think Wendy's is number two. Or, or something like that. I don't, I, I don't know if it's Wendy's or if, if some other, if, it could be Chick, or uh, it could be, um, is it Subway? Yeah, Subway's number two. And so Chick-fil-A has come up there and bumped Wendy's. So I've worked many a Sunday at, at Wendy's and had to not go to church many a times because of what they, you know, because they say, yeah, we're gonna be open on Sunday. So Chick-fil-A basically does in six days everything that they do in seven days. And one of the reasons why the manager at Chick-fil-A, uh, the, the, not the manager, but the, uh, 
the uh, founder, he said, hey, you know, you should have a day for your family. You know, the Bible says you uh, work six days, and then you, um, you know, he, it's, it's not, it, it's not, uh, you don't have that great sandwich to, uh, you know, to sell. It's because, you know, he follows biblical principles. That's why he's in number third, the number third spot now. He overtook, um, he overtook Wendy's, poor little Wendy. So, but uh, it's these biblical principles. And uh, now everybody's what? Guess what? They're upset with Chick-fil-A because, uh, you know, he's, you know, Christians have come in there and they said, no, we're going to support an organization that holds true to the biblical values that we support. And even though we have to go somewhere else on Sunday, uh, we will go there every other day of the week and buy stuff. So, and that's fine. I know a lot of people that eat Chick-fil-A religiously. So... They, uh, they just, I was, I grew up in the South. That's what you do. You went and you went to Chick Fil A. Um, there's a couple other organizations that uh, have great food in Central Ohio that we can't go to on Sunday, also. But I won't. Der Dutchman, that's right. Yeah, but they're German, so we don't like them. So, um, yeah, we don't. Uh, you know, I've been, I've been studying about Germany. They're going to take over the world. You know, it's crazy. So it's. Uh, was it Germany tried in World War One? No, okay. So Germany tried to uh, take over Europe in World War One, and they failed. And then they they were kicked to the curb to never return. And the World War Two came along, kicked to the curb and never to return. And then Germany came along, and after that was taken over. Half their country was split down the middle in in two by you know Russia took half and the United States took the other half, and we you know we gave it back to them like the idiots that we were. Russia kept it. Russia kept their stuff. And then, uh, so Germany has been unified for, what, 20 years now? Just about 20, 30 years almost. Yeah, 30. And now Germany, through political wrangling, is going to take over Europe again. I mean, there, there's basically going to be three parts to Europe. There's going to be England, and that might be some of France, and then there's going to be Germany, and then on the other side, there's going to be Russia. So everybody else is going to be conquered through diplomacy and in probably in the next 10 years. Dude, I'm sorry. Oh yeah, probably the Gog and Magog war. Yeah, yeah. But that's just that's just what from just looking at the situation. So Germany is an awesome country that we're gonna have to fight someday again. So, well, so uh, maybe 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 maybe. <laughs> maybe. I mean, yeah. Uh, you know, the United States isn't. I it's not really in the Bible. So can't really find it in the Bible anywhere. So go to First um, Thessalonians four thirteen. If I can find it. And this is the sixth thing. And uh, 413. The sixth thing that God does not want Christians to be ignorant of is the rapture. Amen. So uh, 1 Thessalonians 413, it says, uh, it says, But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which, sl which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. So this is, you have to understand that at that time, Jesus had just risen from the dead and gone off into wherever, you know, gone off into heaven, and they were expecting him to come back immediately. That's what was supposed to happen. I, I think that's what was supposed to happen uh, just from, just, you know, I think that's what was supposed to happen then, potentially. It, it could have happened a different way, which kind of, it, I think that God actually wanted that to happen. Obviously, he knew that it, didn't happen, that it wasn't going to happen like that because he's God, but it was set up to happen like that. It was set up to, uh, you know, it, it wasn't until the stoning of Stephen that, uh, which, so don't stone Stephen. It was uh, once the stoning of Stephen happened, then uh, God basically uh, blinded Israel for a time. And, uh, I'm sorry, in part, in part, yeah, there are saved Jews. There are saved Jews. And uh, in living in Israel, so and, uh, and New York. in New York, main yeah, the main part is New York, Columbia. and uh, what was it? Do we have? Do we? Have, oh yeah, in Bexley, are there any saved Jews in Bexley? You think? Yeah. Yeah, they have the, a uh, a thing. Okay. They yeah, yeah, they're you know yeah they get saved. Okay, so God does not want us to be ignorant of the rapture. He doesn't. He's talking about uh, them which sleep. So at this time. Christians have basically said, hey, how are these guys going to go and, and rise with Jesus? You know, we're going to meet Jesus in the clouds if we're dead. We can't, you know, we can't meet Jesus in the clouds. And then he goes into detail about, uh, about how God's going to raise them 
at the last trump, and he's going to raise them up and uh, meet him in the clouds. So that basically, over, over the last 2,000 years, we've pretty much, uh, in you know, fundamentalism or in dispensationalism, we've taken that as, a, as for granted that these people knew that because we've got dead ancestors for the last 2,000 years. And it's like, duh, of course God's got to raise him from the dead or else he's slacking his promise. And he's not. God's not slacking his promise. He's going to raise people from the dead. So that's the whole point is we're going to be raised from the dead. So, in, um, um, so Paul showed us the uh, mystery of the rapture in 1 Corinthians uh, 15. You can go there from uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 51 to 58. You can read about that, the mystery of the rapture. So there's two mysteries so far that uh, he, God doesn't want us to be ignorant of. So the, uh, the next thing is what Paul talks, or what Peter talks about. So go to uh, number seven is uh, go up to Second Peter chapter three. If I can find it also. Second Peter chapter three. And then it's uh, verse eight. <laughs> and uh, it's interesting. There's actually a couple things that uh, you have to infer. Uh, because it basically says, uh, it says, finally, be not, I'm sorry, finally, be ye all, I'm in the right place, right? No, I'm in First Peter. Let's go to Second Peter. 3.8. It says, uh, but, beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. Now, how many of you um, have heard of the the uh, theory that uh, there's, um, you know, we're living in the six thousandth year of the ministry of uh, or in, in of the history of the world, and then back before that, you know, you had six thousand years. So it's like it's talking about one day is like a thousand years, you know, and so on. And then you have the upcoming thousand years, which is uh, the millennial kingdom. So that could fit there, and. Uh, that's a, that's a good theory, um, so that could fit there. The only, the only issue that I have when it comes to dispensationalism is that we've been basically in a parenthesis for the last 2,000 years. So if, if that theory is true, we've still got another 2,000 years, no, no, no. technically. No? So you, you got 4,000 years leading up to Christ, and it's been 2,000 years since Christ. Right. So we're at the 6,000 year mark. Right. So that means that it could be up in the year 2033. That's when. 34. 34, I think. Okay, no. So, yeah. So, basically, yeah, I mean, that's a. If you're going to write a book and sell it. Right. If you're going to write a book and sell it, that's. It should be 2033. So, there is no imminent rapture. You guys can all just put it on pause until 2033. Then you get right with God. So, I don't know. That's the second coming that you subtract back to 2026. 2026, which is. Close. Seven years away. Yeah. That's right. So get right with God now. So anyway, but so, so that's a, that's interesting. But that's not really what I'm wanting to talk about. What I'm wanting to talk about is uh, what he what he says further on. It says uh, <laughs> it says be you know it says uh, be not ignorant of this one thing. And then he he says uh, the reason why you're not ignorant of this one thing. And then he talks about the one thing. So the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat, the earth also, and all the works that are therein shall be burned up. <clears throat> Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of, I'm sorry, yeah, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all? Holy conversation and godliness. Amen. So uh, what he's saying is that because we know these things, because we know about what's going to happen in the end, we should basically act right and, uh, and have holy conversation and godliness because we know that, you know, God is not slack concerning his promise. Well, what's his promise? His promise is to come back and get the church and then 
burn everything. Purge this world of, of the sin. And so you should, you should be ready when that happens. You should be part of the church. You should get saved. Amen. You should receive Jesus as your Savior. It's uh, God's not slack. He's going to come back. You know, just, uh, what is it? Uh, just because he's long-suffering, he suffers. Uh, why is he long-suffering? Because he's not willing that any should perish. So he doesn't want uh, these people who are uh, in sin to not get saved. So he sees their heart and says, hey, they've got a chance for salvation. These Gentiles, they have a chance for salvation. And these, these Jews, you know, they have a chance to repent. So he, he suffers. The world suffers uh, because of these fence sitters, basically, is what, what it's saying. But not, not technically, but because God wants these people to get saved, he suffers a little bit, or we suffer because of that. You know, we always pray, you know, Lord, bring the, you know, come back, come back soon. Well, God's going to come back, and you better be found on the right side of the fence. Amen. You better not be a fence sitter like, uh, you know, like God, you know, God's waiting for you to get to the right side of the fence. Well, come on, get to the right side of the fence, and uh, then we won't have to wait any longer. So come on back. So he doesn't want you to be ignorant that the end will come. The day of the Lord will come, and you better be ready. And if you're not ready, you're going to be... You're going to be left behind. It's going to be worse than all those movies. Believe me. They, they don't, it's kind of crazy because, you know, the Christian movies, they don't really talk about really the, the destruction that you see in Revelation. Right. It's always like, hey, we're running from something. Well, no, they're going to zap you down with a laser weapon. I mean, come on. It's, it's going to be crazy. And there's going to be burning and fire. And that's just, that's just uh, a little bit. And then God's going to come in with his, uh, with, with, you know, with the actual tribulation. And he's going to burn it up. There's going to be wars. It's going to be bad. So get saved. Amen. Yeah. So we'll go ahead and pray and get out of here. I'm at, uh, Amen. I went one minute over. So. All right. Lord, bless the, uh, bless the people. Help them to get home safely. Thank you for uh, helping me to, uh, to speak. Thank you for uh, keeping me from uh, sneezing everywhere. I appreciate that. Father, thank you. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Amen. All right, so do we have any time for question and answer? Anybody wants to ask questions? Go right in. No questions? By the way, just FYI, I always tell everybody we don't date set, but it is just a fact of the matter. Jesus died 33, 34 AD, 40 to, our, our calendar's kind of messed up. That's probably one of the reasons God let us use a messed up calendar so it would keep people from writing books. Yeah. yeah. In Hosea, I believe it is Hosea that says that uh, after two days, yeah. that he would then basically yeah. put Israel in their land and he would be their king. Yep. Yeah. A day, a thousand years is as a day, and days is a thousand years. That would put it, that would put it around 2034 or 33 for the second coming when he institutes the millennium, and that would mean that. If our calendars are right and our figures are right, then it very well is potentially between the year 2018, getting ready to turn 19, between now and 2026, the rapture. And it doesn't have to be seven years. It doesn't have to be right at seven years because the Bible indicates there's, a, there's going to be some time between the rapture and the confirmation of the covenant. Yeah. We don't know if it's just going to be months or it could be years, a few years. Uh, we don't know. So that's just exciting there's, to think about. There's another way, like, so from, you also, what, what you said before was that from Adam, from the creation, until the, from the, uh, fall. From the, from the fall, until uh, crucifixion. crucifixion, is what you said. Okay. I just want to get it right. So from the fall to the crucifixion is approximately 4,000 years. 4, years. So if you use the term approximately, it, you know, the, and you, you believe this, the rapture could have could happen approximately any time. Any moment. So any moment there could be an imminent rapture, and this is this is um, you may you know, and these are things that uh, that the Christians at the time they didn't necessarily understand, but uh, I believe they they believed in an imminent rapture two thousand years ago. Um, they believed in an imminent rapture two thousand years ago, which is displayed on the Mount of Olives when they looked up and they were like, hey, why isn't? Of course, the angels came down and corrected them. Yeah. So that has to be understood, and it wasn't. You have to realize that. All the revelation that we have in the New Testament 
happened after that. Right. So, and Paul wasn't even saved for, you know, for some years after that right. to, to give us this revelation. You have a, or this, uh, to give us the New Testament. He didn't give us this revelation. It was Peter. But go ahead. Um, Watson asks, how do post-tribbers figure out that the rapture is post-trib? How do post-tribbers figure out? Well, it's, uh, I think the main thing that uh, the post-tribulation or, or actually there's really not, much biblical evidence for a post-tribulation rapture, but the, the mid-tribulation rapture is actually what most people are pushing these days. And uh, it's just a mis, uh, misreading of Matthew, basically, or Matthew 24. This is Matthew 24 or 25. So, yeah. so it's, it's basically, you know, I, 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 watched, uh, I watched Stephen Anderson, and uh, he, he laid it out. He read the entire chapter from, uh, from verse 1, you know, all the way through it, and uh, he said, I, I'm, not, I'm not moving around, I'm not moving this Bible around. Well, the problem is, is, is if you, you know, if you read the Bible like that, you, you don't, you know, if you read the Bible literally um, uh, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, you're going to have some problems. Matthew jumps around a little bit. Um, there's, there's some issues there, but basically it's a misreading of Matthew chapter 24, and you have a lesson on that, right? Matthew 24? Mark 13 is the equivalent of Matthew 24. We went through that Mark 13 study. Okay. And we also make show the differences that they don't make, they do not rightly divide the word, including the differences. There's uh, in the rapture, there we listed what is going to take place. In the return, at the end of the tribulation, we listed those things. For example, at the rapture, Jesus catches us up in the air. At the return, he lands on the Mount of Olives. And they're, they're, so you just take all those differences. In the rapture, he comes to call out the church. At the return, it's all about judgment, Revelation 19. Right. So you, we've got a message called the rapture and the return. And I think one of them we did it twice years ago. We called one the seven differences between the rapture. And the return. Another one is that where the Bible uses the term first trump and last trump. Yeah. You know, so you have the rapture is it happens at the last and, trump. And, uh, people like uh, Anderson, which he stole everything he teaches from other people. That's true. Yeah, he just puts it on YouTube. Yeah, but uh, in Matthew it says uh, after the tribulation of these days, uh, of those days, that's not a reference to great tribulation. Anytime the Bible says tribulation, it doesn't mean it's talking about the great tribulation. And there's actually a reference in the text about the great tribulation that says after the tribulation of those days then such and such is going to happen and it it's not talking specifically about the whole great tribulation period and so that's the kind of carelessness that they they exhibit when they talk you know when they teach yeah so that that's it okay so the the recommendation is to the, the recommendation is, is to, after this, uh, watch your rapture and return on the uh, BBF Ohio website and Mark 13. So that'll give you more insight. Cause
For solid King James Bible preaching and teaching, along with the encouragement of the Psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, tune in to our internet radio station available every day, 24 hours a day, at bbfohioradio.com. Join listeners from over 150 nations, all 50 U.S. states, and other U.S. territories who are tuning in and receiving free Bible teaching at bbfohioradio.com.